everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Levi and I am sorry for disappearing for two whole months. <laughs> so here's the thing. One, I only drink iced coffee. So if you can at home, this is iced coffee with eggnog. It tastes good. Number two, I did not expect school to kick my ass as hard as it did. So I'm now out of school, so hopefully you can expect some more consistent content. I was also working, so I did find a job. It was seasonal, so it ended, but yeah, it was just a lot. So with that job, I was able to acquire some more of my favorite things, which would be books. I was also able... So these were books that I got for my birthday back in Chicago that I can never actually haul because I was intending to do a big birthday haul because I got a bunch of gift cards. Anyway, without further ado, this is quite a big haul. So once again, there never was and never will be in order to how I do my book haul. So without further ado, let's just get into it. The first book that I have to haul today is Wolf Song by TJ Klune. And this is about a boy named Ox. And his father has kind of told him his whole life that he's not going to be anything. He's not going to amount to anything. He's worthless. And when Ox is, I think, 12, his father leaves them for good uh, with him and his mother. And they live in Green Creek, Oregon. Now, their block has been pretty empty for pretty much Ox's whole life. And then uh, when he turns, I want to say when he turns 16, uh, there's a family that moves in across the way and like down the street and they're full of life and the house is full of life and it's just so different than the way he and his mom have been living and then very slowly they accept Ox and his mother into their family and he finds out their family secret. The next book I picked up is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth. You can see I got this at Target. So My Dark Vanessa centers around a girl named Vanessa and she enters a relationship with her teacher at her high school. I don't think that relationship is the right term but I can't think of a better term and anyway this teacher is manipulating her into having sex with him and she grapples with this basically her entire life until she looks back and realizes that she's not the only girl he did this to and she's trying to confront those feelings. There was definitely a lot, a lot of drama going on around this book. This book and American Dirt were published at the same time and then I believe it was like Oprah's book club or whatever picked American Dirt as their pick and they rightfully got a lot of backlash uh, from that. And then they also picked My Dark Vanessa. And at the time there was another author claiming that the author, Kate Elizabeth Russell, stole My Dark Vanessa from her and her experiences. And people bullied uh, Russell so badly that she had to come forward and say that this was an, an own voices novel. Like this was partly biographical and happened to her. I think people also have to realize that similar experiences happen and that just because somebody had a similar experience to you doesn't mean they stole your story. The next book I picked up was The Great Alone by Chris and Hannah. So this book follows the Albright family. It's post Vietnam and the father has come back and he is just not the same. So when he decides they should move to Alaska, the mom, because she's so madly in love with him, decides, okay, let's move to Alaska. That seems Seems totally sane and normal. So they, they move to Alaska and when they get there they realize that there's no other people essentially. They live in a very isolated part of the world and a very isolated part of their town and when night falls the father and husband, this alludes to him getting violent with the family and, and the two women, the daughter and the mother, realize that they are completely alone and have no way of escaping. So this book is also supposed to be really good. I think that the paperback cover is absolutely gorgeous. The next one is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I'm pretty sure this doesn't need any information, but basically this is about a girl who grew up in the swamps of Louisiana and then one day she finds a dead body and I think is accused of murdering the person she finds. And then I was scrolling through my friend's feed and apparently the author is um, tied up in a murder too. So I don't know too much about that. But my, one of my friends was like, isn't it crazy that the author of Where the Crawdads Sing uh, is tied up in a murder that's very similar to what happened in the book? And I was like, what? So I'm definitely going to have to do research on that further. But... Uh, that's a little concerning. <laughs> the next one I got at Half Price Books, obviously, is The Girl in 6E. And this is a thriller that was going around booktube a couple of years ago. And this is about a, I think she is an online 
sex worker. She doesn't leave her apartment. She's got severe agoraphobia and she doesn't leave her apartment. And also I think she like fears something happening if she leaves her apartment. But then she notices something upstairs or like something in the apartment building and she has to go check it out for fear that somebody else might be hurt. And she starts the daunting process of leaving her apartment. I've heard mixed reviews for this one, but I have been wanting to read it for a really long time. So I'm really excited to get into it. So one of the first book of the months I ever got was Lucy Foley, The Guest List. And this is set in Ireland. I think it got picked for Goodreads Thriller of the Year or something. And it's about this, uh, like people are invited to this very secluded Irish wedding and one by one people start getting killed. So they have to find the killer and they can't like call for help. And even if they do, it won't be there fast enough because they're on this island wedding. My favorite thing is that I simply don't do makeup for you guys. So sorry. I don't think it's necessary. The next one is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager and I am so excited for his new release that's coming out next year and that'll be in my next video. So this is about a girl whose father became very famous after writing about how haunted her childhood home is and I believe her father passes away and she goes back to the childhood home to spend a couple of nights in there and fix it up to sell it. But as she's there, she realizes that her father's claims in his book might not be baseless and there might be something else living in his home. And I really have enjoyed almost all of Riley Sager's other books. The one that I probably enjoyed the least was Final Girls. I love the concept, didn't love the execution. I have heard nothing but rave reviews for this one and I'm super late on reading it. I'm really late on reading it. The next book I have was One to Watch by Kate Stamen London and this book is probably gonna make me cry because I'm reading, I'm still reading Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade and I have to put it down because it keeps making me cry. So this book takes place um, in a, kind of like a bachelor type TV show and our main character Bay Schumacher is a very famous plus size blogger and she's always looking for inclusivity and stuff like that. And she gets offered the chance to be like the bachelorette like I know there's I've never seen the bachelor or the bachelorette but I think like the concept of the show is that one woman is at the forefront and there's a bunch of men fighting for her attention so she gets invited to be the first plus size bachelorette type woman on this reality show and it's a, like about what happens on that show okay the next book of the month was my book of the month for november and that is pretty little wife and i actually have started this one i have a really bad habit of getting book of the months and then just like never reading them but i actually have started this one and it's about a woman who's kind of in this loveless marriage and she can't divorce him because he's very abusive and so she decides to kill him she's like you know what i'm done with this Let's get it over with. So she plans it out. I believe she's a she's a lawyer. And the book starts with her kind of tearing up the whole room. And she has found out that he's having affairs with his students. And she's kind of done with it. And he is always gaslighting her and, um, you know, physically harming her and mentally abusing her. And she's fed up. She's like, you know what? I'm fed up. I'm done with this. Screw you. So she makes a plan to kill him. I started reading this and immediately it drew me in. The writing is just so fast paced and good and I'm really, really enjoying it so far. Okay. And then the last book of the month, I'm really, really excited to read. And that is The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. When I was in high school, Rachel Hawkins literally owned the YA paranormal genre. I don't think this is her first adult debut. I know that she has a pen name. I don't remember what it is where she writes adult romance but this is her thriller debut so this is the wife upstairs and it is if you can't tell from the title kind of not kind of a Jane Eyre retelling so our main character uh Jane yeah she's moved to Birmingham Alabama and she's a dog she's a dog walker um and she walks dogs for very wealthy clients who won't notice a few things go missing whenever she walks the dogs and then she meets Eddie um Eddie Rochester and she starts walking his dog and they end up getting into a relationship and all she knows is that his wife went missing a long time ago and is like presumed dead um and as she starts dating him and starts getting into this lifestyle she realizes that maybe that story is not all that it seems so a very thrillery and modern retelling of Jane Eyre. All right it's getting hot in here so I took off my clothing. Wow, the prophecy's been fulfilled. Oh God, my friend used to sing that every single day in middle school. I don't even know what song that's from now that I think about it. Like I've never actually heard that song. The next book I picked up with a Barnes & Noble gift card that I got for my birthday because it was, 
I think it was 30% off for members. Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. Uh, unsubscribe. I'm very sorry. Um, if I complete this book ever, it'll probably be the longest book I've ever read. It's almost a thousand pages long. But I do have to say it's really gorgeous. Like, I think this is really pretty. I think that the end pages are really pretty. Um, I thought this was special edition. This is just the normal end pages, but I think they're gorgeous. And all I know is that the first 150 pages or so are all info dumping, which is fine, I guess. I don't know. I haven't read any other book by Sarah J. Mass. Another book I got at Half Price Books is One for Sorrow by Mary Downinghan. I was super obsessed with Mary Downinghan as a kid, and she is getting to like the point of Arlstein when it comes to thrillers for kids and I think it really says a lot about my reading tastes and my major now when you look at what I read when I was a kid which is basically all Arlstein and Mary Downinghan. Don't know what that says about me. This is just like a ghost story, middle grade ghost story. Um, oh no. <laughs> Rut row. <laughs> During the 1918 epidemic, new girl Annie is claimed as best friend by Elsie, a t the tattletale liar and thief of the class, but Annie would rather spend time with the other girls. When Elsie dies of influenza, Jesus, Annie thinks she's finally free of her torment until the bully returns to reclaim Annie's friendship and take revenge. So, yeah, kind of, uh, kind of timely with that one. Like, F to to that girl for dying of the flu. The next one I bought on my birthday. So this is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman and Alice Oseman writes and draws the comic and as she also obviously is more is probably equally as famous for uh, Radio Silence and those books. And this is about two boys and I don't know much other than that. I love the color palette. I really do. It reminds me a lot of bloom which i'll put a picture of it somewhere on the screen i read that last year and i really enjoyed it and what was really cool about that graphic novel was that it took place in the summer and in maine but the color palette was all blue so it was all very cool and i like that for like the contrast to that in the summer months and this seems to be the same thing the color palette for this is all very cool and blue and it's supposed to be like this very soft and warm uh, story. So I do like the contrast of that color palette versus the storytelling. I think that's a really good artistic choice. Okay, the next book I picked up, I read Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson and I absolutely fell in love with it. Grown is one of my favorite books of 2020, if not my favorite book of 2020, and is now on its spot on one of my favorite books of all time. It made me cry, it made me scream. It was like one of the worst books I've ever read and I loved it so much. So this book is about Mary B. Addison and she allegedly killed a baby. So the, the story of this book is that there is a white baby uh, who's in care of two black women and the baby dies while in their care. And when Mary is being questioned by the police, she never says if she did it or not. But the jury finds her guilty of this crime and it doesn't specify like what, I mean, homicide, I guess would be the crime, but like doesn't specify like what happened. And Mary spends, um, I think it's a, a six years in jail. So when she gets out, she is uh, 15 and she's pregnant. And she goes to a group home and the government is threatening to take away her baby and that's like the last thing she wants but the real question of the book is did she actually kill the baby in her care? What is the true story surrounding it? The next one we have is another thriller and this is Where They Found Her by Kimberly McCrate. So this book is about a woman named Molly and she and her husband move from New York City into a small town in New Jersey and she starts working for the local paper. Now why they move is because unfortunately she has lost her child and she is trying to cope with that loss like the family's trying to cope with that loss now it's a couple of years later and her first child is five years old and they're like living a good life and they're trying to just like deal with the grief of losing a child she is assigned a story of when a newborn baby is unfortunately found dead in the woods and she's like um that's no bueno. So she gets aside the story to try and figure out what's going on. And her husband is like, do you really think this is the best thing for you after literally losing your child? And she's like, shut up, I don't care. And she does it anyway. And what she uncovers is this really deep, dark secret that is deep within the town. And she's trying to unravel that mystery. And I am, and always will be, a slut for small town stories. The next one I got from the November Owl Crate, and that is Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston. And this is a fantasy story about the woods and foxes. And I don't know the gist of it, but I do like to go into fantasies not knowing a lot. So this is the Owl Crate exclusive edition. It's got 
a dark cover and the sprayed edges and personally I unfortunately like the original cover better. I think that they probably shouldn't have put a dark cover on this. The next book my friend Belle on Twitter was selling a couple of her books and I bought Grace and Fury from her. This is the Owl Crate edition that I really like and uh, this is about two girls and their sisters and um one sister takes the rap for the other sister's wrongdoing so the one sister now gets to like marry the king and the other sister for taking the rap for what her sister did literally has to fight to the death <laughs> to clear her name so instead of you know prison the the justice system here is that she's put on an, an island I think with a bunch of other criminals and if she walks out the winner she is absolved of her crime and um the other sister is like oh maybe i should help her for that one i love my sister so much don't know if i would do that for them y'all can fight to the death on your own that doesn't sound like a me problem the next book i picked up was famous in a small town by emma mills and if you are an emma mills fan this seems to be like the least favorite but I happen to do like stories about being famous and this is about a girl in a small town and there is a very famous singer and uh she tries to contact the singer I think for fundraising possibilities but the singer has never done that so it's it's a struggle. The next book is The Midnight Lie by Marie Rakowski and this is another standalone fantasy and I believe that it is sapphic fuck yeah um, I don't know a bunch about it. So this is what would make a good quiet girl get herself in trouble, especially when she has so much to lose. So all I know about this is that it's epic and that was enough for me to pick it up. So the next book I have is Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. This book looked really interesting and this is about a girl named Razmira and she's turned 18 and she's supposed to be her father's heir. Now when that battle comes to fruition and she has to prove her honor to her father, it's sabotaged and her father kind of like, she loses her honor she goes out of it the father's like well you can't be my heir now because you have no honor dishonor on your family dishonor on your cow and so the only way she can get her honor back is to go into the beast ridden woods and kill the overlord god essentially she has to kill a god to get her honor back or die trying so i believe this is based just based off of the axe based off of like Nordic and Viking lore and legends, which is really interesting. We don't get a lot of that. So this is from the author of The Pirate King and just like that, I think that's so pretty. The next book I have was very kindly sent to me by Page Street Publishing and this comes out January 12th, 2021. And this is Into the Heartless Wood by Joanna Ruth Meyer. This is on my most anticipated list of 2021. And this is about a boy named Owen and for centuries in his town, there has been a tree god and her eight tree siren daughters. So basically what's happening, I think they're like tree humanoid figures, um, kind of like almost like other beings. And for centuries, they've been harvesting, harvesting souls to feed their mother. So they're sirens, essentially. And Owen goes into the woods fully knowing what might happen. And he ends up forming a bond with one of the tree daughters and they end up falling in love and they start getting closer but it's in secret because she's supposed to be you know like eating his soul and as they get closer they realize that there's kind of like a destiny that they're supposed to fulfill. Now this book was already interesting to me and then I found out that I think the tree uh, yeah the tree's name is Saren and it's told in verse. That is my shit. That is my cup of tea. Very 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 excited for this. I can't wait to read it and I hope that it is one of the books I finish this month because it does come out next month and I would love to give it a review. So I've got a very exciting vlog coming up for you guys in the next few weeks. The next one I also got a half price books and that is Everland by Wendy Spinelli and this is one of the first Owl Crate books. So when I picked it up at half price books it still had all of the Owl Crate things in it. So this is the author letter and there were also tattoos that came with it. So these are the uh, fake tattoos. Um, and then this I think was even before Owl Crate had authors sign their books. This is a Peter Pan retelling and um, basically what's happened is a little too on point. And there's a virus ravishing the uh, population of London and basically the only people who can survive the virus are kids. One of the only kids left is a 16 year old 
Gwen and they spend their days like scavenging for food looking for places to live and Gwen and her siblings are are just trying to survive and meanwhile there are these pirates called the Marauders who are invading and then uh Gwen meets Pete and they start off on their adventure to find out if this virus has touched other parts of the world or if it's just this country. So the next book I have is Lovely War by Julie Berry and I am in a really big Greek god kick right now. I've been playing a lot of Hades so it's just reminding me how much I love Percy Jackson. So I think this is going to be a perfect book for me and this is World War II told through the eyes of Aphrodite. And I flip through the chapter headers and it looks like we also get the per perspective of Ares which if it goes like the Wonder Woman route is the root of the war but I'm not sure because it doesn't say it on the back. And basically Aphrodite is narrating World War II. And I know that a lot of people have like cried because of this book and a lot of people have just really loved this book and I don't remember if it's been optioned for film rights. I don't remember. I, I feel like it was. But if not, I feel like this book would just make like a fantastic film and if it hasn't been optioned, it definitely should be. The next book I have is Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. I've also already read this book and absolutely loved it and this is about a girl named Ollie and she's in sixth grade and the sixth grade class goes to a field trip uh, to a farm where they learn how to like milk cows and farm life and stuff like that. Now Ollie is struggling with a few things herself. She's lost her mother in the years prior and is still trying to cope with it and she is kind of just like angry all of the time which is a normal you know response to a child losing a parent and her father is trying to make up for it but he just can't and when they go on this um this field trip the bus driver is just like really weird and she's like Okay, and the only thing he says to her is beware of small spaces. And she's got this book in her pocket and she's been reading the book and it draws eerie similarities to the history tale that her teacher is telling her about this farm. Now they get to the farm and all over the farm are scarecrows and she's like, um, these are kind of freaky. And on the way back, they accidentally slip into like another dimension and all of the classmates except for Ollie and her two friends get turned into scarecrows and now it's her job to try and save the rest of her class. So this book is a thriller for kids but genuinely the suspense is written so so well that it completely captured my attention as an adult. So I immediately bought the sequel and I can't wait to get into it. The sequel is Dead Voices. And the last book is Incendiary by Zoraida Cordova. So this was about a girl named Renata and when she's a baby she is stolen by the crown and raised under um, the king. And she, as she's grown older, recognizes that and hates her life so she has joined like the secret organization that is working against the crown and when her commander and like the head of that organization goes missing Renata has to leave the palace and do his mission as her own but as she comes back she realizes it's not everything as it seems and there's a lot of twists and turns. I know that Zoraida Cordova is Ecuadorian and I believe that there is some Ecuadorian like lore and legend in here um and I know that one of my friends who is Ecuadorian read this and really really enjoyed it and the rep so very excited to get into it this cover once again gorgeous this is the fairy loot edition um it's got I didn't even realize that it's got a reversible cover and it's just absolutely gorgeous Fairy Lou really kills it. That is the last book of this insanely long haul. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for that. I promise I will not disappear for another two months after this video and that you guys will get some more content. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, click that subscribe button. If you hauled any books yourself or any have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and put it down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!